Hello, and thanks for accessing these I'm Curious About videos. In this session, Pastor Kristen Nielsen, one of the assistants to the bishop in this office, sits down with Pastor Carl, John, and Steve from House of Prayer in Franklin as they talk about their congregation's experience of the faithful innovation resources and process. The most important thing for you to understand before you listen to this conversation is what faithful innovation is. It's really just a set of tools and resources that helps congregations connect with people first inside the congregation, but then ultimately outside the congregation, those who aren't coming on Sunday morning, from a stance of listening and really listening to the to the hopes and desires and needs of our neighbors and letting those things change how it is that we are the church. It helps congregations be uh, more actively engaged in their community uh, in a way that people feel like is genuine and not just a way to get more members. Um, so we hope that this is a, a really enlivening conversation for you. Pastor Carl, John, and Steve shared a few stories about little experiments they've done with listening. And the idea is that those experiments keep going that you try a little listening experiment and you see what did we learn about how it is that people are experiencing us as religious folks in the community. Uh, and then you try another little experiment based on what you learned in the first one. And it really just is a set of tools and an approach to listen first and let listening lead our evangelism so that we're connecting with folks in ways that feel applicable to their daily lives. So I hope you enjoy this conversation. If you're listening to it as a group, you can pause the video at the end and use the discussion questions to guide group conversation. If you're listening to it alone, you can pause the video and use those discussion questions as a way to, to kind of guide your own thinking. So without uh, any more delay, I hope you enjoy this great conversation with Pastor Kristen, Pastor Carl John, and Steve from House of Prayer. So I am Pastor Kristen Nielsen. I'm an assistant to the bishop, and um, I am going to be your host this evening. We're so glad that you're with us. Welcome to the R. I'm Curious uh, event this evening. It is an opportunity for us across the Synod to gather and have conversation around our mission and how God is moving in our communities and inspiring us to consider ways that the Spirit is leading us in our mission and ministry. So we are um, grateful this evening to have Pastor Carl John Stone and Steve Johnson from House of Prayer. And they are um, going to be sharing with us today about their experience being part of a faithful innovation process. So to jump right in, I'm gonna invite you, um, Pastor Carl John and, and Steve to just let us know a little bit of what is faithful innovation. So give people a little bit of background. Sure. Well, uh, faithful innovation is uh, a process that our synod um, has has been kind of teaching, um, and there's been a number of churches from our synod that have been participating in this. And it's basically uh, a, a way of both spiritual renewal within the congregation and also uh, learning to see how God is present and active out in the community as well. Steve, would you add anything to that? Yeah, that's that pretty much hits it. I, I had written down um, a process of learning how to serve God in the community uh, by listening uh, better and or listening, um, experimenting on things and, and practicing. Awesome. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Can you share with us a little bit about how you got this going? How did you get it started? And how did you get people interested in being a part of it? What was your recruitment process? Yeah, so um, I, I learned about it first at Synod Assembly last year. Pastor Matt spoke for just a couple minutes about it, but I thought, oh, wow, that sound sounded like something um, that could really benefit uh, you know, our church. And uh, so I went to the... Um, uh, the council and talked about it and uh, people kind of seemed interested for the most part but also for the most part they didn't seem too interested in participating themselves in it so I thought oh boy how am I how am I going to move this forward mm -hmm. uh, and so um, I asked Pastor Matt uh, at, and as well as um, the, the uh, another pastor Pastor Andy Fetters um, who became our coach if they could make like a five-minute video uh, just telling about what this is all about. 
because I think people like really wanted to know like, okay, if I'm getting myself into this, what is it actually going to be? Um, and, and they did that and that was great. And so I went, uh, my council president and I went through our entire membership directory and we just started um, looking at any name that we thought might possibly be interested in wow. this. And we, yeah, and we came up, I forget how many names we had, like 40 or something. And, and then we sent out an invitation uh, to come to one of two Zoom meetings that I, uh, that I led. Um, and from that number, there weren't that many <laughs> that, that came out to one of the Zoom meetings, but there were a few. Uh, and, um, and so I was like, oh boy, okay. And how, how am I gonna get three to five people to be interested in this team? Um, so I, I was praying about that a lot. And, um, and I kept just trying to talk about it in as many different places that I could within our church. Um, mm -hmm. And we're getting closer and closer to the time when we were supposed to, you know, turn in our list of team members. And, you know, within like the last couple of weeks, we got like five people. And I think Steve was the last one to, yeah. to sign up, but we're glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. How, so how long do you, did you, um, when did you start and how long did it kind of take before you got to that? Oh, okay. So, um, so I learned about it uh, in May, last May from Synod Assembly. And probably in June, I uh, talked about it with the council for the first time. And I think I talked to my council president before that. Um, and so then we had the summer basically to try to recruit people. Uh, so, you know, that was probably mostly in August that we were trying to recruit people. Um, and then uh, and into September. Uh, so it took, it took a number of months, you know, three, sure. three months, three, four months, probably. Sure. Okay. Thank you. So tell me a little bit, tell us about the first meeting that you had with your coach, with Pastor Andy, and how did he help to set the tone with the questions that he asked you? Tell, tell a bit about that experience. <laughs> um, it, it was it, just a very real relaxed um, Zoom meeting, um, get kind of get to know each other, uh, even though we're from the same congregation and, and knew somewhat about um, each of the other parishioners that are in our in our group. But, um, you know, just more icebreakers and then in general, what what faithful innovations that we talked about as far as the general concept of what we would be undertaking yeah and, and then uh so that initial meeting was on zoom and then then we had a first in-person meeting which was right before our first large group gathering with other churches and um at that meeting i i thought it was really cool he asked everybody to share their name and one thing that they're known for and he went around and um all the five team members you know, did that. And what was really amazing to me was how everybody named a different thing they were known for. And all of these things were complimentary to each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and then and then after everybody did that, I said, oh, should I go? And he said, nope. And I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was uh, an interesting learning for me because, um, you know, so many things in church are like pastor driven. Uh, and this this was underscoring that this is not a pastor, even though I kind of had to take the lead to to get it going. But like my purpose now is to hand it off mm. um, and and uh, let the team members themselves take the ownership of it. So that was a, a good learning. For me. Awesome. Yeah. So um, there's three different large group gatherings that are part of the training. Tell us about your experience of being in that first large group gathering or the second one. Just what are some of the learn those learning sessions? What were they like? Okay. Um, well, for the first one's a little bit because you, you you know kind of the general concept, but you know it's 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 new to you, so a little bit in, intimidating. But you know that everybody's there for you know for the same same purpose um and i think the the biggest takeaway from the first uh group was just learning to listen um 
listen for God. Um, you, you had to tell you had to tell about uh, facts about the individual. You interviewed somebody from not not within your own team, and then you had to uh, introduce that individual to your group uh, and tell, talk about that individual. So, um, you know, getting getting to to listen better, more intently, and learn from what other people are saying, uh, and then as as we practice that listening and, and observing within that um, within that practice, the second larger session was learning about how we can take that those listening practices and then experiment in going out to the community and how our church and our faithful innovation group can serve God in, into the into the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and another uh, notable thing about each of these large group uh, learning sessions is that they were not held in churches. So um, the first one was at Marquette University in their, it was called like their innovation lab or something, I, something like that. Yeah. And then the, the second one was in uh, in this kind of art art space in, um, where it was like West Alice or something like that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it was really cool because there were like all of these paintings you know, that um, people in that community had made and they were all for sale. So like if anybody liked one, they could take it home with them. But it, it was it was really kind of cool. And um, just kind of, uh, you know, Matt, Pastor Matt made the point that, um, you know, when we're out of our normal places that, you know, that kind of gives you a different openness maybe to, uh, to learning things. Um, so that that was really good yeah and and, um, and and he also made the point too uh, going back to that first um uh learning session that uh for most people being heard is essentially the same thing as being loved uh so that was and, and i think i think we we experienced it like that was very powerful um to to share people shared these faith stories um and and the spirit in the room was was palpable. It was really, really amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, the energy of gathering with everybody is what I'm hearing. Uh, having the opportunity to listen, um, maybe in a way that you haven't before, with with some new folks, and just realizing the the spirit's presence in there uh, among you all. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about, you talked about there's some initial experiments. Uh, Steve, you had mentioned that, that um, you were invited to do as a team. Um, I think you had um, uh, dwelling in the word, there was a mapping exercise, uh, a driving in the neighborhood. Uh, tell us what your group experienced in doing those things. What, what stood out for you and what was it like to do those things? Yeah, the, well, the dwelling in the word. Um, so oftentimes in in church, you you, you listen to it, but you don't you, you don't really like think in depth about it. The, learning to kind of take your time and take a pause after because we, we we read it once and then take a pause and then read it a second time and allow it to kind of sink in and and truly listen to what those words are are trying to say or what what God's trying to say within those uh, within those words it's amazing the uh, the passage that we've read from October till now and even you know the, however many months later that we read it and something new pops up in our our discussions with uh, within the group um, so and we and just discussing that uh, quite a bit um, and then as far as the, the driving in the neighborhood, um at, we, we took a couple a uh, couple drives through the neighborhood they happened to be on weekends and it was you know pretty quiet nice days um not a lot of people out um so we're going to be doing some more walks in the neighborhood to hopefully uh have more communication and conversation uh with as the weather uh, warms up um i don't know pastor you want to add anything on that? 
Sure. Um, well, <clears throat> part of this as well was making or like drawing a community map. So we got this large piece of paper and you're supposed to draw your church in the middle and then everything you can yeah. think of, you know, within like a mile, you know, all around your church. And so we like we came up with a really good map, you know, and like we looked at the Google Maps and it's like, yeah, you know, we like we got a lot of a lot of stuff on there and a lot of stuff that we didn't actually recognize was like so close to the mm -hmm. church. And, and so like we started learning and, you know, I'm I'm, you know, fairly new to Franklin, but, um, you know, most of our team members have lived there for quite a, a long time. And uh, and, you know, there were new things that that they noticed about it. Um, so then our assignment as well was to um, to try to encourage the congregation at large to um, add to the map and and we uh, and that was very challenging uh, <laughs> and, and so and so this is this is something that um, Pastor Mad had talked about at the beginning was uh, all of the, these are all experiments and so you have to get used to failing sometimes because uh, failure is actually not failure as long as you ask yourself, what did we learn from it? Uh, so um, so the, we, we kind of failed in part of the, that with the map, but we, we like tried like a lot of things to try to get people to add to it and they, they didn't do it. But uh, just a couple weeks ago, yeah. um, our Sunday school teachers had the idea of, well, let's show the map to the kids in Sunday school and they, had all kinds of things to add to the map that we hadn't thought of. <laughs> so. And and because and because of that, I think that's going to spark maybe a fellowship event for our church to uh, to, to have to maybe we can bring in kids and their families to grow as a church family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is curious to me that you had the the dwelling in the word exercise spend more time in scripture and hear from one another the mapping exercise to see who what do you know about uh your neighborhood where you're located and some of the challenges of what you know and what you don't know and how to fill it in and even the the driving in the neighborhood or walking in the neighborhood is uh, say a little bit more about what that was about it was to do to do what to also to, to, to observe our community and, and see if there were opportunities that our church could serve God in, in, in our community um, and, and also see where God's working within the community. I mean, so often we think of God in, in our church and, and really God's not just confined to, to just our church. God's everywhere. God, God has everything. So um, it's not, it's not keeping us boxed into just house of prayer, the building, but where can we take, um, I guess, God's love out into the community and, and kind of intermingle with, with the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So um, sort of practicing um, just seeing beyond the church, the church walls and into the community, because what you name sounds kind of um simple but would you say that it's simple to do these things what, what, what did I you mean, learn from it? yeah go ahead Steve. i don't know if i would say simple i i mean it's a process um it, you got experiments and like pastor said it it's not failing it's trying something and if you if you stub your toe you stub your toe and hopefully learn from it and then try something something different yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so you kept going, uh, tried more experiments, kept trying things out. And I love hearing the fact that then uh, the kids had had a whole lot of things to add to the map. Uh, what a wonderful um, reflection of how maybe there's people we need to ask uh, what they're seeing uh, to help us broaden our the fuller picture. That's really, really lovely. Um, I understand you did another experiment in the snow park. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, so we've been putting fellowship events to try to grow our, our church family outside of just coming to church, just more fellowship opp opportunities to learn more about one another, to be 
comfortable with one another. Um, and also tr trying to get events for different generations of, of, of people to, to, to bridge all generations together. So we have the privilege of having the, um, the, the rock, the, the snow park um, in, in Franklin for skiing and um, tubing. And so that was one of our fellowship events was to, to go there um, if you're interested in, in uh, tubing for the day. And for those individuals that might not be interested in, in actually participating in the tubing, but um, just to observe, um, to go and see people having fun, seeing where God is, is present on the, uh, on the slopes, and then uh, talking about how God has, has blessed our lives and, and um, blessed us for that particular day. Uh, and we ended up getting um, 15 people from the congregation that participated in that. And it was, uh, I, I, I think, a lot of fun. So. Well, and, and also, you know, before we had this outing with the congregation at large, um, a few of the team members like just went to the rock and this was supposed to be like the, the first experiment outside of church. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so they kind of settled on the rock as the place to go. Um, I, I wasn't able to go to that one, but, um, but they didn't know like what they were going to do once they got there. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but, you know, I think what they did, you know, upon reflecting on it, it was like, it was really very similar to what you do for dwelling in the word which is, what do you notice? Um, what, uh, you know, what is God nudging us to, to see here and to do? And um, how is, you know, how is God present? So, you know, what questions do we have about being in this place? And I mean, I was really like astounded at all the ways they, they saw the evidence of God's presence in, in this place where you, would normally you would never think oh yeah i'm gonna go have an experience with god at, at the rock today you know? <laughs> yeah do you have any examples to share with us some of the kind of things that people noticed yeah um so a couple times people wanting to race down the different so letting somebody go ahead of ahead of them in in line to participate or, or vice versa um i was wearing a um I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan and just one of the uh, the individuals that work there just commenting, <laughs> harassing me a little bit, and just jovial conversation back and uh, back and forth. Uh, we noticed the beautiful day that God provided uh, for us, but uh, and, and the friendliness of the staff and just everybody having a good time, even the, the, the larger group, not just the house of prayer group, but um, the interactions, the, fr the friendliness that uh, we had with people. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anything else you would add from what you heard from people, Pastor? Um, yeah, I think I think that's that's the gist of it. Yeah. What yeah. Like. Awesome. So tell us a little bit after you've been doing, uh, you know, participating in the large group as you've had your sessions with your coach, uh, Pastor Andy, as you've um, done these different initial assignments of just noticing and sharing with one another, talking to one another, answering those questions of what do you notice? What do you wonder? How might the spirit be nudging you? Um, what, what are you noticing within yourselves about what's it been like to be a part of this process I didn't prep you with that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, it it as you get more experience and uh, with the with the process, it's becoming easier. I know. I think I can speak for at least the 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 small group that's going through the faithful innovate innovations. We just bounce ideas off one another. Uh, the conversation is very free flowing. I think we've all grown in our in our listening and and ex experimenting and and really enjoying the the process and i think um that that has allowed us to speak more openly about it to our congregation mm -hmm. um we've we've shared it within our church council meetings um and had a conversation there we've 
shared it in our in um, the worship uh, committee group. Um, pastor's been ha having us do within our Lenten uh, on our Lenten uh, Wednesday services, um, discussing dwelling in the Word opportunities. So just just getting people to open up and talk more and and and, and dwell uh, in the Word, and then hopefully I think um, we haven't gotten quite to this point, but then being more free about opening up to individuals beyond the uh, house of prayer so when we go to like the snow park um maybe seeing opportunities where we can converse more freely and dwell in the word with with individuals not not at house of prayer um so yeah thank you yeah uh yeah that, that's all that's great steve um i think uh just gaining like a more of an openness to to the ways god surprises you in in uh the, you know in the ways god shows up and uh um that people uh are like willing to to try things uh that are um a little out of the box and and that actually reminds me of the name we selected for our team uh Ooh. one of our team members came up so we're house of prayer so we always abbreviate ourselves as hop or hop so so we call ourselves the hop outside of the box team <laughs> I love it. that's great <laughs> yeah and and that that name i think has really set the tone for our team because people uh on, on the team are just they're willing to say okay i know this is a little out of my comfort zone but i'm i'm gonna try it you know and uh and they do and and you know they they can do it so um it, it's just really cool to see that um and just how many layers like you can uncover or that god can uncover you know just by um like not not rushing you know um mm. and just allowing things to to be revealed that's really yeah. lovely yeah go ahead yeah i would i would just to to your point pastor it, when you said rushing, I mean, I think we live in such a fast paced society and we're rushed to do what's ever next. And, and we don't take the time to just really appreciate how God's in our life right, right then and there at, at, at certain moments. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. I hear from you, um, from you both a, a playfulness and excitement. Um, as you said, uh, Pastor, I, um, a willingness to try something and not be afraid if it doesn't uh, turn out exactly maybe the way you thought. Um, so maybe some look at it as failure, but then you can say, what did we learn and how do we keep going and try something else that, that, uh, that persistence to keep going and see what, see what you will learn together and what God might be up to among you. It's, um, it's really fun and it's evident to hear as you're sharing. So that's really cool. All right, well, I have a couple questions for you, some uh, follow-ups for you. Um, how has this process influenced you personally? Just for me, just growing, uh, being more open and, and growing with my fellow parishioners at House of Prayer and and learning to listen better and and, spread the spread that message with others um yeah thank you yeah i think um right just uh realizing um that god is god is working in in everybody in in some way and uh so how do we notice what that is and and listen listen to um you know those nudges and um, yeah, I think Steve, you mentioned just a more of an openness, and I, I think that's that's the word I would use. Mm, awesome. You yeah, go ahead, uh, um, Kathy. Kathy. Yeah, um, what's been the buy-in from the members of your congregation, and uh, roughly what's the size of <clears throat> of your congregation? Um. Our, we have about 180 members all together, and uh, on the average Sunday, probably 
50, you know, 50, maybe 60, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the week. Um, and I'd say there's been a good buy-in. Um, people have really um, taken to, to this. Um, and, and there was some things that I didn't share earlier um, that kind of illustrate that. Uh, one is, is um, uh, whenever our team has done something, a couple of them will get up before the service and talk about it um, in their own words. And, um, uh, you know, I think people really enjoy hearing about that. But then uh, the, some of the things that the team has encouraged me to do. Um, so um, when they, when we practiced in that first large group session, listening to one another's stories, and they said, oh, you should try that for the Thanksgiving Eve service. Uh, so I said, oh, okay, we'll, we'll try it. So, um, so if, you know, I think I maybe spoke for a couple minutes, and then I turned the rest of my sermon over to allowing people or inviting people to to share um, something that they were thankful for with somebody near them, uh, and and people really enjoyed that. And then uh, our team met, you know, a week or two later, and they said, oh, you should do that for Christmas Eve. I said, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and so I did. And, you know, it's Christmas Eve. You have, like, so many people that that's the only time they come. Um, but I, I invited people to share with somebody near them. No, I, I even – did I even say get up and and find – yeah, I think people moved around. Right. Um, and, and But share a favorite holiday tradition. Um, and, and they, they did, and er, like everybody participated and like afterwards people were like commenting, like that was so great, you know? Um, and, um, and then as well as we're, when we're doing this, um, for our Wednesday evening Lenten services and, um, you know, the, the first week I said, okay, we'll take like 15 minutes to do our dwelling in the word. Oh, and then, oh, sure. um, <laughs> And then the next day, somebody emailed me and said, oh, that wasn't enough time. So then I bumped it up to like 20 minutes. And then um, and then last week when we did it, I didn't even set a timer. And, 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 and finally, I said, what time is it? And it was like 750. You know, we'd been doing this for like 35 minutes. Or so. so I'm like, all right, let's wrap it up. But but then the, 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 the other cool thing is like people will then just stay after the service and just talk with each other um mm -hmm. you know because they're they're uh building those connections that maybe they um hadn't done to the same degree before so it's, it's been really cool yeah I, just just the openness and a lot more conversation uh watching a lot more conversation and dwelling in that word more de uh, definitely so i would say yes to that buy-in yeah, and, and the dwelling in the word, I think some a lot of times people don't get it at first, um, but after experiencing it, um, I think most most people find it to be a very valuable experience, especially as you do it more than once, because every time there's another layer, it gets peeled back, and you're like, oh, I didn't know that was in there, you know, and God just keeps talking to you in all yeah. these different ways. Yeah, and, and actually at, at our church council meeting when we initially brought it up, I think there was a member or two that after we read through the dwelling in the word, and it's perfectly okay, mentioned, well, I'm as confused as I was before we, before we read this. I really don't understand it. And you know, we have the open-ended questions and, and, and you know that's okay because we're experimenting and practicing and it's okay not to understand it. We're, we're not supposed to understand it every single every single day. It's just practicing it and and learning from it and and getting better awesome thank you both so much oh my goodness this has been really lovely to hear your experience with uh faithful innovation and how you've engaged it and how it's influenced you thank you to all of you for being here tonight i hope that uh, you were inspired by their story and that it invites you to be curious about how god might be leading us together and sparking maybe some similar curiosities for how you can have some conversations. If you want to learn more about Faithful Innovation in particular, um, feel free to reach out to Pastor uh, Matt Short or to anyone on our Synod staff. Um, 
we can certainly let you know when the trainings are happening or when the next cohort happens. Um, if you want to talk a little bit more about some of what's stirring for you with Mission Table uh, members, we will stay for a few minutes afterwards if you want to just chat still on this Zoom. But we are going to close out this section of our, our timing and uh, say thanks to all of you who are listening to this, um, who are just watching the recording. And again, if you want to learn more about Faithful Innovation, uh, please reach out to uh, Matt or uh, someone else on Synod staff. We'd be more than happy to share. Thank you so much. 